I am your host, Eric Novak, and today we have a special guest. He is Tiger Ruas. Hello, guys. Thank you for having me. It's going to be awesome having like this chat with you guys, and let's do it. Awesome. And like I said, you know, I run rest- we I'm part of wrestling public, so whatever you say will be headlined. So you get to talk freely and you get to talk about everything that you want to talk about, including where you want to be next in your career. Yeah, man. It's like uh, um, it's been a long journey, right? Since I started doing every, like sports and the wrestling stuff. And it's been like a good and fun, fun journey. And it's an adventure, actually. <laughs> Every day, like learning something new. Every day, like uh, feeling that I'm evolving for like a better, better me, if I can say that. And it's, it's awesome. And now, now I'm having so much fun working on AEW, doing a lot of indies now and having fun, you know, like I have like freedom to do what I want to do. Well, we'll talk about what freedom means in, in other companies. So we'll, so let's start with the beginning. You are a martial arts expert. You have an MMA background, right? You have a jiu-jitsu background also, correct? Yes. How did all of that come to be? That's, that's very impressive. So talk to me about that. Yeah, it's a, long, it's a long journey. As I said, I started with nine years old practicing Aikido. And Aikido, if you don't know, it's a, a Japanese martial art. Okay. Most known because of Steven Seagal. And he did those movies and kind of brought Aikido to the to the like to us to know what is it. It's pretty much a self defense martial art, but has a lot of principles of like discipline and and how to become like better human being. So you train yourself to be a martial artist, but at the same time you you kind of work your inner inner self. Mm-hmm. And that was my way to start. And I used to, to me and my other brother, I used to meet my oldest brother in a gym. It was like Marco Ruas school in that time. Marco Ruas, if you don't know, is a UFC legend. He was on of the beginnings of UFC. Like he, he actually, it's very famous because he brought this style of MMA. Mm-hmm. So he wear trunks, no gloves. And like, if, and he used to say that if you want to kick me and punch me, I take you down. <laughs> and if you want to take me down, and I will punch you and kick you. <laughs> so pretty much that's the school of Marco Ruas. And I used to meet my older brother there. And of course, being there, Marco Ruas used to say like this, hey, no one can be just watching. You have to train. Come in. <laughs> so I remember I used to come in and get beat and and learn a lot of Muay Thai, Luta Livre, Jiu Jitsu. And that's where... I started to do amateur wrestling and combining all this stuff we used to train in Marco Reyes. I'm sorry, guys, this is my dog. <laughs> and uh, and that's, that's how I started to evolve. And pretty much I kind of was doing Aikido, Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai with Marco, all this guy, all this stuff all together. But my main goal in that time was to become an Olympic champion in freestyle wrestling. And that was my... My biggest goal, and that's why I always, everything else I trained, but I always focus on amateur wrestling, the freestyle wrestling, to become an Olympic champion. And following the guy, the, the lead of my oldest brother, Antoine Jouts, who did like he made three Olympic games, he made three times the team. He he wrestled on Athens 2004, and my family in Brazil is the biggest wrestling family, and. And it's crazy, like, it's been a long journey. And finally, I became a pro wrestler six years ago when Kenyon and William Rigo came to Rio to do the first tryouts in South America. And I was lucky to be there, and I was lucky to, to meet them. And I remember in, in that day, my life changed, and I became a WWE superstar. <laughs> no. Uh, I got to, that's incredible. And I want to talk more about, you know, the Olympic goal that you have. What are you currently doing, you know, at every day, just pushing yourself to get closer to that goal? What motivates you? Yeah, and, and like, that's still being my mindset. And I always say it's like uh, an Olympic athlete mind, mind game, my mindset, if I can say it's like, I said my games because I feel that most of the times you, you are playing a game. Mm-hmm. So 
this game, it's a big game when it means like what kind of what kind of efforts you are going to do, right? So the choices you made in your life make your life. So like people sometimes don't think that if you put a little bit more effort in something you like, you want to do, that thing will grow in your life. And I always had this mindset to be always pushing myself hard, working hard, and, and never never doubting myself to be like, hey, man, I don't know if I can do it. I always said to myself, I will do. I will do whatever I want. I will do because I want it. And that was my dream. And I started to achieve a lot of stuff, a lot of medals. I became like 17 times Brazilian champion undefeated. So like, and 17 times means 17 years. Oh, wow. So like 18 years in Brazil, and I got like many South American medals and Pan American medals, and I brought like a historic silver medal of uh, a world championship in Bulgaria. And mm -hmm. in Bulgaria, that was like for South America was the biggest thing, almost the Olympic champion, right? And in that time, and still these days, I always think like this. If I want my life to be good, I have to start doing good stuff, mm -hmm. thinking well, uh, acting well, being a good human being, being humble, trying to learn as much I can. And whatever you do, if you have this mindset, you're going to achieve, achieve a lot of stuff, man, a lot. Always good stuff. All right. That's very, wow. I had no idea. I can't believe it. I didn't know that. That's an amazing goal. And I really do hope. You get closer and closer and you achieve what, what you want to do at the end of the day. Um, talk about wrestling for a little bit. Because, you, again, your background is a long journey. You got to evolve. How did the story of you getting to evolve? What did you do before you evolved? How many independent shows did you do? And and just how, how did evolve come your way? So, um, in that time, I was in NXT. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like... I, I figured out who, who I was, and I was like doing the Arturo who was, and I just got my name at that time, the Arturo who was name of my character in that WWE. And I was like asking for, for work. I was asking, hey, put me more on TV, put me more on like on TV shows. I, I want to like keep wrestling. I want to understand how is it. Because it's funny, because when you, when you sign with WWE, if you never had a pro wrestling experience, it's kind of tough to understand what is it, right? It's like inside WWE, they teach you a lot. They teach you cameras, they teach you promos, they teach you how to wrestle, the basic stuff like uh, the high spots, the internationals, whatever it is. Mm. But they don't tell you what is it, the pro wrestling thing. They don't tell you, it's like, how can you explain? It's the same when you go for, for example, Brazil, and, and we know about soccer, right? Mm. We know about soccer. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Brazil and ask someone about soccer and go, hey man, how is it? How is it to watch a game? And and that person, because she lives in Brazil, she, she loves soccer and it's part of the culture, she will explain to you with like just just feelings, just good feelings. Hey man, you go to the to the to the arena, you're going to have so much fun, you're going to see your friends. She's going to share with you what is the sport. Mm -hmm. And in a pro wrestling, you don't understand that if you never did a pro, a, an indie match. Yeah. Because that indie match is the core of what is it, the sport, is the heart of the sport. Is is that those families on the weekend, they, they love the sport, they look at their kids and they go, hey, let's have some fun. So let's go and watch some pro wrestling show. Mm -hmm. and that is the, the the spirit of pro wrestling so you have to entertain of course you have to give like a good match but most of the time you have to make people happy and they like they have to smile if they are watching your match and they are like not feeling anything so you did a bad job but if they are like leave the arena feeling that good thing yes you did it perfect so for me Evolve came in that moment where I was asking for more. Mm -hmm. And Triple H came to me and said, Hey, Arturo, I think it's going to be good for you if you go to Evolve. And we start to build you more there. It's going to be like a good way to people see your style, start to get like more familiar with you. And you are going to feel it more. So I want you to be just you 
uh, go there and have fun. And mm -hmm. that was my talk with Triple H. And it started to happen. And every show I used to do, I used to feel so much like more comfortable and more like being myself. And man, everything changed after all. So everything started to change. I started to get more opportunities in NXT. I started to get more opportunities in WWE until I got drafted and everything else happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I actually, I want to bring up a topic that you brought up because, you know, it's very insightful that you said that, that if you're not having fun and if you already have the experience as an independent performer, being in the independent scene, you have the, the idea of what you're getting yourself into. So my question to you is with WWE's newest announcement that they're no longer going to have independent wrestlers and they're going to make their own wrestlers with athletes. How do you feel about that? So I think it's, it's, it's pretty hard. I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of, of course, you can get like, I will say like you get a kid, right? And you start to teach him a new sport. And how can spread like the kid probably he will learn it and but I'm not sure if he will get it right away because it will take time mm -hmm. to mature the sport in his head to make him understand. And if you are trying to make different if you are trying to bring different athletes, you can't you can't do that because you are going to teach them the same and they are going to be like doing all the same stuff mm -hmm. because they don't know what they are doing. But when they start to understand what they are doing, they are going to start to change themselves because they are going to find themselves. And it's kind of hard because I just feel that they are kind of stamping characters and being all the same. Mm -hmm. And they are going just to change storylines and people are going to change storylines, but not actually the character. So I feel kind of weird. But of course, we are going to watch it to see what's going to happen because we don't know. But as I, I see, as I learned, I don't know. You are going to see the same thing all, all over every day, the same show, the same, skill, the same skill sets, the same. It's kind of off. But I don't know. We have just to see what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, this question I'm sure is brought up to you even before the interview and and this question I get and ask a lot with a lot of, you know, former WWE wrestlers or just, in, you know, in general wrestlers that came from the independents. And you brought up an amazing point that they're going to train their wrestlers the same way. They're going to act like robots. They're going to act like they're the same person doing the same skills. And that's one thing independent wrestling isn't, is everyone was born from a different craft. There's a guy from Australia, there's a guy from Brazil, there's a guy from this. You're all trained differently. If you go to the school and you're all trained the same way, you're not going to have that the golden star mentality. And that no one's ever brought up to me. That's an amazing point that you brought up. So I, I thank you for that point. I have no yeah, idea. So, like something that happened to me there was like, imagine, I, I, I used to live in another country. So I moved to a new country, trying to learn a new language, trying to understand the culture of the country, trying to set myself in, no friends, no family, no, like the only, the only thing I had was my job. Mm -hmm. The only, like, I, so it's funny, man. You, you, you kind of, it's a really hard time. So like when you imagine, so I had a, a, my, my life for many years and I simply, I said, Bye bye, and I moved to US. So one day after, I remember was almost kind of a year after I was in WWE already, and I was like watching a match and on a live event, and I was like watching a match on NXT, and I was like thinking what to myself, like wait a minute, man. like why this guy he's making this same move over and over, but why the the bad guy? And that time I, I never I never heard about him. Mm -hmm. And my head was like a bad guy. I knew it was a good guy, a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Why the bad guy always stops the good guy and cheats? Why he always cheats to stop him? Mm -hmm. And I start to think and think and I realized, wait a minute, let me see. And I Google it and I start to think about it and I was like, shine, cut off, hate, finish. No one taught me that. Mm -hmm. I just realized it. And I was like, wait a minute. So I had to Google that to be able to learn that because it's impressive. Being in a place 
to supposed to be learning w, like uh, wrestling no one taught taught me the, the very basic stuff so mm -hmm. that's what i'm saying like take time take time to understand what is it take time to be able to perform in high level take time so people think that's easy it's not easy at all it's the most hard thing you can do i don't know it's, it's amazing man well, it's great that you, you know, had the idea of Googling and doing research before getting into that, which meant that you had more of experience. You know what I mean? Even if they didn't know, you didn't know. You at least were the smartest guy in the room by doing the research. That's amazing. I mean, you know, next topic I want to talk about is NXT and, you know, Raw. And then, you know, SmackDown and, and all that. You were part of Evolve. Then you went to NXT. Then you went to NXT. How was that like? I know you had matches with, you know, Pete Dunne, Kushida, amazing stuff. How did you enjoy NXT? What were the highs, which is like, what were the best parts of NXT? And what were the lows as a performer, as someone who's trying to, you know, make it as a name there? It was very hard, I imagine, because of a lot of other talent there. So talk to me about NXT a little bit. Yeah, man. Like, um, actually, NXT always, always was happening, right? So I was already three years and, and something in NXT, almost four years, if I'm not wrong, and start doing Evolve, mm -hmm. right? As I said, I figure out my style. I figure out, actually, when you start in WWE, in that time, actually, and it was, they never taught me anything. They always used to go and tell me like, hey, Find out yourself. Try to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. Try to be. So, like, I came in. That's another point I was saying. Like, I came in, like, with all this curriculum I always had. And in my head, I was like, all right, now I have to act, be an actor, and, I don't know, put a custom on myself and be some, someone. Mm -hmm. And I started to overthink a lot of different ways to, to show myself, right? And every time when I used to do that, nothing was happening, right? And I was like, wait a minute, man, something's off because I'm building stuff, I'm creating new stuff, but I'm not getting those ideas pushed, right? So, like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. So, finally, I realized that I, I don't have to create anything. I just have to be myself. And I started to be myself. So, I brought the key and I brought my black belt because I have a bunch of them. So, I started to wear and I put my Muay Thai stuff on my arms and I was like, all right, and I, I'm going to be me. So I was like speaking a better English at that time. I started to feel more confident to do promos and I started to do my promos, whatever. And I started to realize that that's me. And when that thing was happening, and I don't know if I did right or wrong, but I probably I did right because everything started to move forward. So I started to get, so I got uh, uh, beat done. So I did a match with Matt Riddle, mm -hmm. but always was being said to me is like this. Hey, you are a badass. You are a legit killer. You are a fighter, professional fighter. You have an amazing back, uh, like background. We can use it for us. Like you taught the MMA fighters, you taught the, uh, Demi Amaya, uh, Nogueira brothers. So we have to keep you kind of strong. And here and there, they were like giving me those matches kind of to kind of help the guys to get pushed, to have like highlights, or whatever. And and always was like, not promised, but it was like, hey, you're going to become a, a big deal, a big deal. Just wait for it, just wait for it, just wait for it. Mm -hmm. And never getting used so much. So I started doing the Evolve thing because I supposed to be something big on Evolve. And I don't know what happened. So came the transition to NXT TV and I supposed to be on NXT TV came up promo on December, on the Christmas uh, Eve. They kind of did uh, the promo, and I was supposed to be on January on TV, and everything changed, and they took me out from TV, and nothing happened. And always hearing, always hearing like, hey, wait, something's going to happen, something's going to happen. Wait, wait, your time is coming, your time is coming. So I kept working hard, doing my best, always being humble, asking questions, whatever. I was doing my best all the time. And came finally a day when they looked at me and they said, be ready because you're going to Raw. 
And I was like, oh shit, that's a big deal. All right. So we were like on TV taping when I met uh, Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman looked at me and he said, hey, I bring you up to, to Raw. So be ready. And imagine. So like I was like, man, like shiny, man. I called my wife, good <laughs> news. So the next week, Paul Heyman got fired and everything changed. And I stayed like kind of five weeks waiting something to happen. So came a notification on our app at that time to be on Raw. When I came to Raw, it was the Raw Underground. And everything started to happen there. So I did the, the Raw Underground. We'll, the we'll, we'll, we'll get to Raw. I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. We'll get to Raw Underground. I do want to talk about this for a second. You, you mentioned to Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman getting fired must have been a very big, big deal for your character, for your story. Was Paul Heyman in charge of what they were going to do with you next? Was he basically going to tell you what what was going to be your position and, and stuff like that? The first talk I had with him, it was kind of like this. Um, hey, we are bringing you to Monday Night Raw. I want you to be prepared and we are going to talk about your character and, and what you do and what's going to happen and just be ready for it. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the only thing I heard from him. But before of that, he came to NXT one year before and we had like kind of one-on-one -on -one talk and he always said he's a big fan of me. He always loved my character. My... So I remember one one point I looked at him, I asked him, hey, do you think I have to change something on my character or something? And he was like, no. Just be you. You, have, you don't have to do anything to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. Hearing that from Paul Heyman was like a big compliment. Like, And I felt that I was on the right path, doing everything perfectly. And in that time, also, I had like the support of Road Dog, X Pack, and, and having a lot of kind of talks with them, always trying to go for the right direction. And that's how oh, Hamo got fired and you know everything changed after so it was kind of weird <laughs> mm -hmm. and when they gave you the idea of raw underground i'm sure you must have had some kind of like a happy moment because it was kind of what you do you know it was kind of like most of, the way they at least promised it for us the fans was that this was going to be like a underground fight club type of thing which would have been perfect for your character in my opinion, martial arts is on the ground. Everything is allowed. It's not like ropes. It's not this. It's more of, you know, what you would expect. And then it became less of what people wanted it to be. And it became more of, you know, jokes and shenanigans, stuff like that. So what was your immediate idea when they said, hey, we want to do Raw Underground? It's like when it came the news came in and I heard that they were like building the underground, the club, mm -hmm. like the fight style. And actually I found out it was kind of a week before. Mm -hmm. Very really like very really like foggy. Like I didn't know exactly what was happening. They told us to bring some street clothes and our gear and that's it. Be prepared for something, whatever it is. And that's a good part of NXT because NXT, you they prepare you. They mm -hmm. prepare you to be a superstar. And when you feel that you are ready, you are just ready. You just have to wait. And and I was actually feeling that I was like already waiting for something. And, and it was taking a long time. And when came in the news, I was like, all right, I'm ready. I'm going to go there and deliver something amazing because that's me. That's my, my opportunity. Mm -hmm. And in NXT, actually, all the in that that time, not now because I'm I'm not there. So like I mean, in that time, most of the wrestlers in NXT, they they had that anxiety to get called up. They were they were like training hard, preparing themselves. And it's funny, you you didn't have to be on TV to get that lottery luck of hey you let's go. We're yeah. going to use it. You know what I mean? So before we, we had that thing where, okay, if the guy is on TV, he's going to be on May roster soon. Mm -hmm. But that started changing because like some guys started to get called up 
and they never have been on TV. So we had that mentality to prepare. The NXT was like a really like real stress environment, like always getting pushed and most of your matches never good enough. Everything's so exactly like a performance center. People try to make you the best of you. So when you had that called up, most of the time the guys used to take a deep breath, like, ah, finally made it, you know? Like, I don't have to keep pushing myself so hard now. I, now I made it, so I can now just enjoy the ride and keep evolving, of course, but, like, I made it. And when I came there and I saw that's supposed to be uh, an environment that's going to help me to tell the, the, the crowd they, they don't know me because I can only see some people know me, knew me, but in, in, uh, in main, uh, main roster, Raw, mm -hmm. the underground was like a, a perfect, like, uh, first look. Who's, who's actually uh, who was? It's a legit killer, black belt, and he knows how to fight, uh, like, street fight. And in my head, I thought, okay, I'm going to stay here for some weeks. Maybe they will build a championship, whatever it is. I will be like doing a transition, a smooth transition by here, like something, right? Mm. And the things start to happen when like they start to build ideas for the underground, maybe a championship, but wasn't like a, a title championship, supposed to be maybe a, a car or a, like an award or something, because it was like a fight club vibe. Mm. So it doesn't make sense to give a title or maybe a suitcase as money in the bank. So that's why we were like bringing ideas of maybe a car, maybe gold, whatever, something different. Mm -hmm. And from no reason, underground just finished. Well, there was a and reason. There was a reason. It was oh, yeah. And it like became we we figured out that someone was like with COVID, and and they were like spreading the thing and. I mean, I mean, yeah, it was that, but also, sadly, the fans just didn't see it as what they promised it would be. People promised it to be, like, this really cool underground right. matches. It was, like, a five-minute segment, which, you know, it was disappointing. It was a disappointing thing in, in, the, in the sense. But um, what I want to talk about is, yeah, so what, okay, so as we're talking, I'm getting this understanding that since you went to Raw, they just wouldn't tell you what you're doing. They would just say, prepare for this, you would show up, and then you'd either be disappointed or you'd be happy. But they would never tell you actually what you were doing and when you were doing it, correct? Yeah, like when you, when you, when you used to arrive there, so you used to see the card, and the card goes up, and you understand what's happening when the card is up. Mm -hmm. Many times I had the, 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 the opportunities to come there and the card was already up and you already know what you're doing. But most of the time I was like, it's not up yet. So let's wait. And we kept waiting. And and I remember like I, I had a day when I got like a big promo and supposed to be a big angle between me, Bob Lashley and Dolph Ziegler. And, and that was supposed to be a, like a main thing on underground. And, uh, and Shane was telling me that he was thinking and, and wanting to create me and build me strong as like a black belt, jiu-jitsu black belt. That's why he wants me to be facing Bob Lashley. And it was a big angle and a big promo. It's supposed to be the full episode of Underground, just me and, and, and Bob Lashley. Mm -hmm. And whatever. And I, like, I remember like it was 30 minutes before, hey, Arturo, everything changed. Just go change. You're off tonight. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like for no reason. And uh, the things started happening. So like, it was a very crazy environment. Like people used to tell me, hey, man, be ready. Man, Ross is very crazy. And I was like, well, maybe when I went there, I was like, oh, my God, it's crazy. <laughs> like even the rioters, they were like, they, they didn't know what was happening. But like, th that's the business, right? Everybody knows that. So. I'm sorry to hear that, though. I'm sorry to hear that every time you were getting close to close and close, they would just yank that away from you. I am sorry to hear that. But let's talk about something good. Let's talk about, you know, after leaving, you made, I'm sure you had a lot more stuff going on. But the one cool thing that I really like is you did blood sport and you battled Josh Barnett in there. And that is a big deal because I have a lot of respect for blood sport because of how different they treat the ring and everything about it. And I'm sure you were like, this is wrestling. 
Like I'm sure you yourself were surprised. So tell me how that happened. Tell me how blood sport came your way. It's, it's funny, man, that um, I always loved blood sports, right? Uh, and, and that was when I was a teenager, I used to, to play in the street of blood sport. And mm -hmm. our, that was our main, main game. So I remember we had like a restaurant and that restaurant used to close every Monday. So the, the restaurant had like a fence where people used to, of course, like had tables and sit there. But like when was closed, no table. So it was like kind of an MMA cage. And we used to go, hey, Monday, it's a blood sport day. So we used to go to the street and just fight each other. It was so cool. So when I moved to, to US and started to understand pro wrestling and I heard about blood sport show, I was like, man, like I have to be there. But of course, WWE never allowed me to be there. And um, William Rigo used to tell me, hey, this show, one day you're going to be there, you're going to kill it. And when I left WWE, the one thing I knew, I said, now I will wrestle when I want, where I want, with who I want. Mm -hmm. And the first time it was blood sports. I said, if, I, if I'm going to wrestle, my first match after WWE has to be on a blood sport. And it came, it came, and Josh Barnett is an amazing fighter. I always like like him as a fighter. It's funny that he used to go to Brazil to train with Marco Rua's team. Mm -hmm. At that time, he used to train with uh, Roberto Leitão Sr. It was like uh, a big master on um, in, in Luta Livre. Luta Livre is a jiu-jitsu no gi almost. It's like a grappling. Okay. And... Uh, uh, I, I remember I used to see him training there, and he, he was a friend of my brother. So life is too crazy, but put me together with him again, and we had an amazing match, and that Blood Sports 7. If you didn't watch it, just go watch it, Blood Sports 7. And it was so much fun, man. Like, I mean, I came, and I knew that I'm going to face a, a tough guy, a experienced guy, That's and the, main guy. the Blood the blood was a was part of it, and I knew it. I was like, "Hey, let me get prepared. It's going to be nice." And and kind of was like a dream coming true because I made it. It was amazing, and I want to be there again. And I told him, "Hey, if you want to do like a second second time, I will beat your ass this time. <laughs> You're not going to get so lucky." <laughs> But yeah, no, you had, that was probably the biggest match of that card, just because it's him, you know what I mean? That's Josh, he created that, you versus the man who created it, that, that was, that was a big deal. Seeing that, seeing you do that, I was like, oh, I'm not even worried, he's gonna, you know, make it just fine in this industry after the be And again, you know, a lot of things you're doing, and, and a lot of more things you'll be doing in the future, now that the doors are wide open for you with where you want to go. So we talked about Bloodsport. Now it's about AEW. How did AEW, you know, come come out to your uh, advantage? You had a few matches. You had what three? Actually, three dark matches, and you won one, correct? Yeah. So I did my first match there with my old tag team partner Cesar Bononi, mm -hmm. and it was a pretty cool one. We kind of had an opportunity to showcase ourselves as a team, and that was pretty pretty awesome, and. I remember, like, you know, being being out of WWE and you are, and have that. I have a family, you know. I have two kids. My boy just turned six. I have a daughter of two years old, mm -hmm. and you know, it's tough, man. I I was like there and and living my dream, and suddenly I was like, hey, nothing, nothing now. And of course, blood sport and great opportunities was coming in. But nothing so like concrete, not nothing had, like I, I, I didn't have income. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, please God, if, if everything works well, let me go to, to AEW because I believe we have two different things. We have the sport entertainment and we have this, the sport that entertain. Mm -hmm. So like, kind of funny to say because when I think in Portuguese, it's, it's funny to think about it. Is that WWE? It's just as I said, uh, maybe the same kind of wrestling and moves and storyline to entertain people. 
Mm -hmm. But an AEW is a sport that entertains people. So, like, if you want to know what is the pro wrestling sport, it's a mix of athletes, high-level athletes, with a good skill of acting. So, like, they are, like, most of the 90% athletes and whatever, 10% actors. An opposite way is different. I don't want to say nothing anymore, but I think it's different. So mm -hmm. I, in my head, I was like, my main goal, the main place to be now is going to be AEW. Because they have the best athletes, uh, like the best athletes in the world, and nothing better to be there facing them, mm -hmm. facing all these guys. And I want to just keep doing what I want to do, what I like to do, and I believe something on my destiny is is a, it's happening with pro wrestling it's like i don't want to quit uh, pro wrestling just because i had doubts on my on my life mm -hmm. but i believe that i deserve to be part of the top levels athletes in pro wrestling because mm -hmm. i am one of the best too so aw is the place i came there i did my match with that caesar it was amazing I had another opportunity to showcase myself. I did a, a, a match when I won with just a kick and the match with Pac. Pac, I always was a big fan of him. Amazing athlete, amazing fighter. And and I had a match with him. It was like, like Josh Barnett, another dream match for me was having a match with him. And I learned, learned a lot from him and was amazing. So I just want to be there to be contributing with the the pro wrestling business and with the company. That's it. <laughs> it's simple. And I'm wishing now to be to be signed with WWE, to be uh, with AEW, to be signed with AEW. It's like that's my main goal now. Yeah, you know, I agree. AEW definitely will use you very well. You being there will definitely change the game in ways that I'll never imagine. And yes, it's something that, you know, everyone should tweet at, you know, on social media, tag AEW, you know, if you guys want to see tag Aruas, you guys got to do that. That's how this works. We have to help in every way possible. Um, other companies that I do want to talk to you about, just because, again, your talent is very different than anyone else's talent. And there are companies like Impact, NWA, MLW, and New Japan Pro Wrestling that I could see you you know, doing very well in. Have you considered uh, any of those promotions? Yes, I am. I am actually talking to New Japan, and uh, that I would and, love. I would love to see and, you in New Japan. And talking to another company too, like Impact too, and it's just talk for now. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be, as I said, in the in the mix. And I believe those companies, they have the top athletes, Impact, New Japan, MLW. And I know that those companies, they, they have in their tops, and in, in their tops, the best athletes. And I want to be part of them. So I am free agent. I am negotiating with the companies. I want, I'm talking to them. And I'm just waiting the good, the good opening, the, the, the best place to be. But... Let's see. Let's see the next chapter. And I'm very positive to be soon enough and one of them signed. Yeah, you know, again, there's so much amazing wrestling. And AEW is, you know, one of the brand new ones that are getting a lot of attention. But there's so much talent and impact that, I'm, that I could just see you having an amazing match with Josh Alexander. Imagine you and him in the ring would be something else. Anyone from New Japan, anybody at all from New Japan, you can have an amazing match with. There's the, the the list goes on with MLW as well, the talent that they have. And I'm sure you know a few friends of yours, you know, that are in MLW and Impact and New Japan. And I bet there's a lot of people that you know that are in all these companies. So I'm sure you would have amazing, amazing matches with all those people. And like, like I said, the door is wide open for you. So let's see what happens. But before, you know, we end off the interview, let's talk a little bit more about the future and who are a few names you want to wrestle in the next year? So not this year, next year. Yeah, I have like, uh, as, as because my goal, my main goal is AEW. And I have been thinking a lot about of 
of some guys, and I have kind of a list. Adam Kof, I always wanted to, to wrestle him because I believe that he is one of the best now. And, and be able to be in the ring with him and kick his ass because I think that he's cocky and he always thinks that he's the best. To be able to show him that he's not so great as he thinks he is. And the other one is Kenny Omega because Kenny, I believe he has a lot of history on his back. And I want to be able to be part of that history. And if, if I had the opportunity to have a match with Kenny, that's going to be for me another like uh, dream match. Mm -hmm. And also Andrade and Idolo. Andrade, I had the opportunity to wrestle him on a live event on NXT, but that was way, way back. <laughs> um, now it's going to be a different story. And and I would love to, to kick his ass, to kick his ass too, because he thinks he's the, the, the best Latino ever, but he's not. So all those guys, I think, is going to be a good way to, but now one with great respect, but a dream match for sure is Daniel Bryan. Uh, him is going to be like an amazing match too. too. I think it's going to be a lot of macho arts happening and maybe one of the, the big ones with him. And those names, I think for now are my, my picks, my first picks. <laughs> All right, so we, we know where you're mainly wanting to be at. We know who you want to fight. So, yeah, like I said, everyone just has to help promote. Everyone has to help get the word out. And we got to see you in AEW. We got to see you start getting some of those big matches because those will be five-star matches for sure. Yeah, man. Like, I'm open for, like, to do business with, with companies that want me to be there. And as I said, man, I have been working very hard since my nine years old age. So like these days, man, I was like, just thinking about life, how life is crazy, how, how up and downs happens and, and why this happened. Right. So when, when, when my life changed on this, like uh, with sense of like having a job, not having a job and you see like the world changed with the pandemic, the, with the virus, people had their lives messed up a little bit but the most important thing you have to think is about your your inner self mm -hmm. you have to be true with your inner self all the time trying to be a better human being a better person helping others always trying to be positive and i am open to be like doing good business and making offering a little bit what i had all these years <laughs> learning and, and bringing to, to the, to the pro wrestling universe. That's mm -hmm. my main goal now. It's like be able to share what I know. That's perfect. And like I said, we, we are going to help get the word out. We definitely want to see you versus Brian Danielson, you versus Andrade, you know, Kenny Omega and Adam Cole. We, we want all that. We, we definitely want to see all that. And we definitely want to give, get back a uh, Josh Barnett's blood sport. We definitely want to see that happen again. The, the list goes on and on. For you and in, in, in the independents, and there's so many independent companies, Warrior Wrestling, House of Glory Wrestling, you know, so many amazing promotions that we want to see you at. We're going to make sure anyone wants to see you, anyone wants to tweet a promotion, that's what they got to do. That's when we get the word out. Um, yeah, you know, what an amazing conversation we had. I appreciate you talking about your time with the Evolve, your time with NXT, you know, the WWE, you know. And, you know, my last thing is with you is, out of all the stuff that you've done, out of everything that you've, you know, achieved, what was your best and biggest moment? What is one moment that you look at and you're like, I'm very proud of this moment right here that I've done in my career? What a question, man. It's, it's a, a very good question. I had many moments, man, because like many, many moments. Like, let, let me remember one of good ones, because as, as I said, we, we live in a pressure. Like, we are all, all the time pushing ourselves so hard inside our minds. And 
in my case, and, and I say that technique is everything, because I believe that technique, not just the, the jiu-jitsu technique or the fighting skills technique, I believe that you have to have a technique to, to live well. Mm -hmm. So I always ask people, okay, what kind of technique you use to be happy? Because in the end, in the end, we are just using a bunch of techniques to get through life, right? Mm -hmm. So like no one was born knowing how to drive a car. So he had to learn the technique to be able to drive a car. Mm -hmm. And no one uh, was born walking. So he had to learn the technique, the technique, how to learn to be able to, to walk, to be able to, to, to walk. And that's why I say that technique is everything, but technique makes you better. You, you can't learn any type of technique and get worse. Like mm -hmm. no, no one, of course, of course, if you think about that, like the really people trying to, to get worse in life, they can learn whatever is technique to get better in life. But mm -hmm. Most of the time, when you want when you want to learn something, is to improve your life. So, I think technique is everything. You have to improve yourself all the time. Be a better person. Be a better human being for for you for others. Oh shit! Can you hear me? I can hear oh. you. Yeah, you're back. Right. <laughs> for you and for others, and and that's it, man. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be talking to you guys. It was was a pleasure. And can't wait. Of course, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, you know, like I said, thank you so much. And, you know, this was just a very big honor just to talk to you. You know, I've been, I'm a fan of yours. I love what you did and I love how much you provided for us while you were in the company that you were. And Evolve was a very special thing. Because I live in New York. I've been to the few Evolve shows. I've seen you wrestle. You know, it's one of those things where you know it's 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 special you know what you could do and what you did do and, and how it's very different how they you know they they basically like put a collar on you they didn't let you do everything and they limited you for a lot of the stuff so we're happy that you're back and, and that you're not limited anymore that you're full throttle and you have your full technique now I evolve i have a lot of fans that saw me on evolve they send me like messages saying that they miss it and, and, and when you said about moments, it's funny because Evolve, I remember a lot of good moments there when I had my matches, my my field with Anthony Henry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, was, that's the one, yeah. Like amazing moments where like, uh, when we did that match, no hold, no hold barred, mm -hmm. and like we killed each other all over the venue. And, and, and that was one of biggest like moments of my career when I understood like that and I can make it because like, People like me, people are behind me, people understand my style. It's funny, when I did my match with Pete Dunn, I remember, like, as I said, we live in so much pressure that when I left the match, and it was like a huge match because I, fa I faced like a, a big name, yeah. in the and I came out of the match and I kind of bent my knees down and I was like crying and thanking God uh, to be able to, to provide me that opportunity to showcase myself not just for the fan, but for the company itself. And that was one of the matches when Triple H came to me and said, hey, good job. So, and, and I knew that like I was being seen, like they were like watching me and many good moments were a lot. So when I did my, my Raw debut and I did a main event, one main event was like uh, against um, Humberto Carrillo mm -hmm. and I did my entrance and the entrance was on on the arena of Raw, right? And I came out and the full entrance happening. And I was like, oh my God, man, that's so good to feel. And <laughs> even though being in pandemic with no fans in there was a great feeling just to be able to be stepping in that moment. And a lot, man, this, this ride didn't finish. And I will for sure remember a lot of good moments still. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. How can people follow you? How can people, you know, buy your merch? How can people support you? How can people, look, what are your, what are your social media accounts and everything? Uh, my Instagram, it's uh, at Adrian Jout, but you can find me on my profile. I am Tiger Huas. And my Twitter is the same, at Adrian Jout. And it's easy to find. And I am open for bookings. I'm scheduling my 2022 a year now please book me 
I want to wrestle. I want to fight people. I want to kick heads. <laughs> and if you want some good technique, book me. <laughs> people find you on like Cameo. People buy your merch. Do you have anything like that? I am behind of this. I'm not doing a lot of Cameo. I'm not doing merch yet because I'm just trying to see where I'm going still mm -hmm. and to be able to start to, to build again one more time. But, so like I'm kind of just feeling the flow. But I'm thinking of something now. I'm working on merch and some pictures, like signed pictures with some gifts with some merch coming in, some t-shirts. But still cooking, still cooking. All right, perfect. I see you wearing a Redcon uh, shirt. Are you sponsored by Redcon? Yeah, they, they like support me. I'm not sponsored by them, but they support me. They send me a lot of products and I love the products. They are like one of the most... Uh, clean products and good products like uh, i'm a big fan of them so like we are together team <laughs> got it all right thank you everyone for listening thank you tiger rose for coming on we'll see everyone thank next time on another episode thank you